News for you, awesome websites without code. We are currently on day one, the introduction. So we've already gone over the introduction at the beginning. We've gone over the website showcase and we're currently on the course outline. We'll also go over PDF files and assets, an overview of Adobe Muse and preparing the interface. Day two is installing web fonts where we'll install the following web fonts to use on the website. Day three is header and footer. So we're gonna set the largest breakpoint. We're gonna create the header layer, add the header elements, create the footer layer, and add the footer elements. Day four is section one. So we're gonna create the section one layer and add the section one elements. Day five is section two. Day six is section three. Day seven is section four. Day eight is section five. Day nine is section six and grouping. So along with creating the section six layer and adding the section six elements, we're gonna prepare the elements for breakpoints by grouping. And this makes it really easy to move elements across different breakpoints. Day 10 is the one-to-one -one breakpoint. So before we get into adding tablet and mobile breakpoints, we're gonna take a little detour and create what I like to call a one-to-one -one breakpoint. And this is done by setting the minimum width breakpoint to the same size as the largest breakpoint. So this could save you a lot of time because you could completely bypass creating tablet and mobile breakpoints and having to change the layout of elements on those breakpoints. The only difference with a one-to-one -one breakpoint is that the entire website will fit on a small screen. So the website will look really small on let's say an iPhone 5S and the user would sometimes have to pinch and zoom to go and look at smaller elements on your website. You can get away with this if your website still looks good on a small device, and this would save you a lot of time because you don't have to add breakpoints and change the layout of the elements on those breakpoints. Day 11 is tablet breakpoints. So we're gonna add the 1280, the 960, and the 840 breakpoint. We're gonna adjust the responsive pinning and layout of elements on those breakpoints, and we're gonna adjust the footer on the 960 breakpoint. We're going to add the tablet and mobile menu on the 840 breakpoint. Day 12 is mobile breakpoints, so we're going to add the 600, the 480, and the 320 breakpoint. We're going to adjust the responsive pinning and layout of elements on those breakpoints. Day 13, we're going to add anchor points, and we're going to link the desktop, tablet, and mobile menu to those breakpoints. Day 14 is SEO and favicon, so we're gonna add paragraph tags. We're gonna add a title and description to the page. We're gonna add a suffix and prefix on the master page, and we're gonna add alternative text to images so that on screen readers that don't show images, the user still knows what the image is about. We're gonna add a favicon image, which works really well for branding, because if a user decides to bookmark your page, there'll be a little icon of your website so the user knows that it is your website. It also shows up when a user is browsing in a tab. The favicon image shows in the tab. Day 15 is testing tools. So we've already gone over sizzy.co and Google Resizer. We're also going to look at browserstack.com, Chrome Developer Tools, which is right in the Google Chrome browser, Safari Responsive Design, which is in the Safari browser, and the Xcode app that's on a Mac. Day 16 is uploading to a live server, so we're going to get domain and hosting. We're going to get FTP information. We're going to enter the FTP information into Adobe Muse, and we're going to visit the website on a live server. Day 17 is a summary of the course, so we're going to go over final thoughts, key points. We're going to take a quick look at built-in widgets in Adobe Muse. We're going to take a look at museforyoushop.com and the tutorials and widgets you can find there to extend the functionality of Adobe Muse. Then we're gonna take a look at starting your own website once we've finished the course. And after you've finished the course, you get this congratulations screen. You have now completed the Building a Chef website in Adobe Muse course. So that is the course outline. So now let's take a look at the PDF files and assets that are included with this course.
Muse for you, awesome websites without code.